Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant. We are back for some more Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. I hope everybody is excited to find out what is behind this door. I know I certainly am. Uh, just to contextualize, we are in the Guild Ruins. This is in the Water Shapers Guild, the bottom floor. We had like a gigantic fight over here a lot against a lot of Nagas and Oozes. Here the Guild Master died, sadly. And then we found out where the Naga came in from, which was from this entrance here. And we also killed them all. So this entire floor is cleared out. We picked up the item Rod of the Deep Hunter, which together with like a verse that um, the Guildmaster gave us should be enough to open this door. So let's find out. So we're going to touch the door with the Rod of the Deep Hunter. The door reacts at once. A stone panel shifts aside to reveal a circular dial engraved with symbols. This would appear to be a locking mechanism requiring a precise combination. Oh, but I don't know the... Okay, let's say the symbols are on the dial. Brushing aside a layer of dust reveals a circular dial with pictographs. Though you could not guess their relevance or a relation to each other, you recognize the symbols themselves. So we have hands, rain, fish, and eye. Oh, was it? Okay, I think this is like the, the verse she told us. The first is a full moon. Well, not an eye at all. Uh, it's light beaming down on Eora. The next is a Juana symbol of Ondra, classically depicted with the head of an angler fish in her aspect as Ngatni. The next is a pair of hands reaching out for each other, their fingertips just barely making contact. And the last is the rain, falling powerfully and inexorably. Uh, let's leave. Yeah, so this is this is the text she told us. Pitied is Ngati, Lady of Lament, so this would be the fish, maybe. As the pearl orb of the heavens crosses her view, the pearl orb is probably the moon. Her eyes well with tears as constant as rain. Oh, but the moon's skyward journey continues apace. The lover's affection as ephemeral as fingers touching. Okay, so wait. Wait. The pearl orb of the heavens crosses her view. What is this? I'm guessing maybe these two are the same. So Ngati, rain, moon and fingers. Ngati, rain, moon and fingers. Oh god. So I will rotate it counterclockwise. Ngati. Press. You hear a grating mechanical clunk of stone tumbler setting into place behind the door. This reminds me of the White March. <clears throat> uh, what's the name of the, the fortress, man? Why is my memory so bad? Uh, the fortress with the cannons and the dwarf ghosts. <clears throat> Durgan's Battery. Jesus Christ. Okay, Durgan's Battery. That's it. You also have a puzzle similar to this. Uh, so, Ngati. And of course, I already forgot. I am very sorry. <laughs> I am very sorry, my memory. Ngati, rain, moon, fingers. Ngati, rain, moon, fingers. Ngati. Rain. You hear the clatter of tumblers reset, resetting behind the door and the engravings rotate back to the moon symbol. It doesn't seem like you're unlocking things in the correct order. Really? Really? Okay, wait. My brain is very small. <laughs> Pitied is Ngati, Lady of Lament, as the pearl orb of the heavens crosses her view. So initially I thought that the pearl orb of the heavens was the moon. So... 
Oh, maybe it repeats it itself. So Ngati Moon Rain Moon Fingers. Okay. Let's see. Ngati Moon. Aha. Rain. Uh, moon. Awesome. And then fingers. Yeah. You hear clattering and whirring as the dial recedes into the door. There's a low rumble as the doorway opens inward, revealing a dark, narrow tunnel beyond. Let's travel through the passage. The air beyond the passage is humid, reeking of stagnant water and something else. Something old which raises the hairs on the back of your neck. Ooh, I like this. I like this. As you take your first step, an ear-splitting roar rises in volume and echoes down the passage, shaking loose the surrounding rock. Go through anyway? You navigate a dark, narrow tunnel, pressing your shoulders together to fit the passage. We might just all die here. Oh no. No, no. Is this like a water dragon? Uncover the threat to the guild. There are... There are four pedestals. And this one has an aura. As the massive upheaval of water settles, the air thickens with oppressive humidity. It takes a moment for your eyes to adjust before, before you can make sense of the shape that breached from the depths. How in all Aora have they kept it down here? That's a good question. Oh, this would be a great fishing story. <laughs> Holy God, but it's beautiful. And I'll bet smart as a whip and just as mean. She sucks in a deep breath and naturally Adair liked it because it's an animal. Have you come to deliver me from this prison of my own making? The dragon flares its nostrils and glares at you. Yeah, it's it's some kind of aquatic dragon. It has like the, the, the things on between the fingers. Dragon! <laughs> Let me get my bearings first. Who are you? I am Skirilophus, guardian of the isle. Kiorilafas. Oh, this is the guy that the Naga were talking about in a songo. The guardian of the islands that he 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 went deep underwater and never it was never seen again. He slaps his tail against the floor. You ever consider a nickname? <laughs> well said. Skiorilafas narrows his eyes at you there. Just give it some thought, is all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. What is this? One of Andra's whelps? His snout wrinkles at Takehu. <laughs> Hello. Takehu swallows. <sighs> Hot steam jets from the dragon's nostrils. Oh, I gotta go for this one. Mr. Piggy, say hello to Skiol Skiorila... Oh, God. Skiorilafas. At least your pet does not tarnish the dignity of this prison. Okay. You can only be here for one reason. You serve the Huana. Not exactly. His, arrow, his eyes narrow into slits. This prison is built on a foundation of their lies. Mm. What are you talking about? You stand in the sanctum of the Water Shapers. Those who make parlor tricks of Ngati's art. An art in decline. The Huana Covenant has failed. With each grain of sand surrendered to outsiders, Ngati draws her favor away from her chosen people. Okay, so he doesn't like outsiders coming into Neketaka, I guess? Uh... Takehu, could this be true? He stares up at the dragon, oblivious to you, until he blinks and returns to the moment. I only know an interpretation of Ngati's covenant, but Akera, 
It is possible. He nods slowly. The guild hides how their acolytes struggle. Their ancestral forms no longer respond as they once did. Soon, there will be no water shapers to remember them. When their mighty talent went into decline, I gave the Huana the strength to raise the very sea against our enemies. Hmm. Okay. For my generosity, they bound me to this chamber by my soul. This... this cannot be true, I say. So the dragon was actually a power source for the water shapers, I guess? The half-breed's naivete is charming. I see why you suffer his company. Naivete. And now the dead fire dies in my absence. The luminous Adra shrieks in agony, calling out for a guardian. Hmm. Oh. Okay, I, I don't want to go for this just yet, but I hope I get a chance to do it. You're the reason Water Shapers are so powerful? The Juana of ages past could have shaped the very dead fire to their liking. Now their backs have turned against Ngati's covenant. Their art is an echo of its former glory. Raising a shaking hand to his mouth, the Kehu blinks up at the dragon. By Ngati, he speaks true. Your disgrace. So pure and concentrated. The other water shapers knew nothing about this. Clever Pariki twisted the forms of her art. Rather than give obeisance to Ngati, they draw from the wards of this prison. Oh, oh. so these are the wards she was talking about. I needed to restore them. The dragon shows his teeth, his steaming breath rising from between each fang. They draw the pa- <coughs> What? Rather than give obeisance to Ngat, they draw from the wards of this prison. I guess the, the water shapers draw power from these wards then. None but the masters of the guild ever knew this. Okay. Mother, Ngati never told me this, I say. Takehu raises the shaking hand to his brow. The goddess sent her insufferable tests. She never raised a fin to deliver me from this prison. Skiori Elafas growls long enough to send a tremor to the chamber. Well, let's read the dragon's soul. Your soul is stuck here. Let me take a look. You are a watcher of all the kith who could have entered this chamber. How intriguing. Ah, goddammit. By the way, I... I don't think I swap my secondary weapon. I think I still have the sword. If this guy is piercing immune, which I I don't think it looks like it. I might be in trouble. Submerging in the dragon's soul feels at first disorienting, like perusing the stacks of a vast library. The energy and vibrancy that, could, that should color his soul is gray and worn. From the shadows, a dark, formless thing reaches out to you in desperation. The wards around the stone floor drag the essence down and disperse its energy elsewhere to the water shaper students of Nekataka. As it touches you, the weight of the prison is like an anchor. You withdraw from the sensation feeling shaky and depleted. I've looked into your soul, it's true. Believe what you will. My duty to the archipelago is all that matters. Freedom comes like the tide. And the dead fire heeds my call. I sense a rod among your belongings. Skiori Alafas narrows his eyes and watches you carefully. My gift to Pariki. My covenant with the Huana. Another broken promise. It made the enchantments of this prison and can destroy them. It can set me free. The dragon lashes its tail in eager, repetitive circles. We have a responsibility, I say. Trailing off, Takehu pulls absently on one of his hairs. But if he speaks truth, Lihuana are better served if he remains. 
Hmm. Your opinion is irrelevant, half breed. This is Arcana. Letting you go deprives the Water Shapers of a useful asset. Well, you don't say. What happens to your captors if I do as you ask? The Huana have chartered their doom. I will not mourn their passing. What, they will die? Neither will I speed it along while they stand against the foreign tide. Okay, so he's not gonna kill them. I think that's what he's saying. I have questions about you first, Dragon. I will tolerate your curiosity. You think of yourself as a guardian? That is a duty as old as the islands themselves. In ages past, there were three guardians. They watched over the Isles, the Adra, and lost to Kaizo. Mm, once more, Ukaizo. That is. that is similar to the tenets of Ngati's covenant. Takeho furrows his brow. You are perceptive <laughs> for a fish. What do you know of Ukaizo? A city where Kith spoke to gods. The heart of an empire. I know only what I hear. I, I, I don't really understand. Is this guy good or evil? Or is he just neutral? I don't even understand. Ukaizo was gone before my time. Even its myth is dust and ashes. You spoke of three guardians. Creatures of unparalleled age and power, bound, like me, to strengthen the Juana. If they still lived, no foreign ship would trespass on these islands. Hmm. Something on your mind, Takehu? Akira, there is too much running through my head, I say. Takehu touches his forehead spot. For another time. I... Takehu reaches up and touches his cheek with a shaking hand. The fish is not ready to know what he only now suspects. Mm -hmm. Something like a chuckle echoes in your mind. Ukaizo is lost beyond all memory. Better to forget that monument of hubris. How did you get in here? As outsiders threatened the Isles, the power of the Huana waned. Crafty Pariki sought me out to strike a deal. She used my soul as a crutch for her water shapers. In exchange, she vowed to protect the Adra. Mm. Yeah, water shapers don't protect Adra, they hold back the Rawatai and Armada. Indeed. The Huana bite off more than they can chew. I came as an honored guest. The Water Shapers grew strong, and new conflicts replaced the old. When I resolved to go, my captors left me here, cheated and howling in the dark. It seems to me like this guy got screwed over. I, <clears throat> I mean, part of me wants to fight him because he looks like a boss in the challenge, but at the same time... He doesn't seem evil. So you're bound here by your soul. Hariki and her crew forged wards that anchor my soul to this chamber. I am not chained here, but I am compelled to remain. Okay. So we have a check here for metaphysics and history. What if we excise the imprisoned portion of your soul from the rest? No, my soul is not for the taking. Not by you, or any of the outsider spirit thieves. Okay, there's a lot of options here. We have diplomacy, bluff, and insight. It can be done without harming you, I just need to inspect the wards. If you're afraid, just say so. These checks are very easy, which makes me suspicious. No one's taking your soul, we're just letting most of you free. Isn't that what you want? How then? You have a plan for this mad scheme of yours? 
<laughs> just one, you're not gonna like it. I take a closer look at the wardstone for a start. He lets out a distasteful hiss. Very well. I give you one chance. Time has weakened the wards enough that I can leave this cell without you. Hmm. There will be a debt of pain that I have no wish to incur. Betray me and I will summon as many waves of Naga as it takes to shatter this prison. The dragon unclenches his jaw and watches you in silence. I... I... Don't... I'm gonna quick save. I don't know what's happening here. I'll see it done. A raised wardstone stands out from the watery floor of the dragon's prison. The runes engraved along its surface glow with pale light. Inspect it. Enchantments coursing through the stonework keep the dragon tethered to this spot and siphon energy from his soul. The spells of imprisonment look more recent. Metaphysics. The siphoning enchantment merely sips at the dragon's essence and disperses it elsewhere. You think it could be used to store the essence, enough to last decades or longer if used responsibly. You can tell nothing else about the enchantments. The ward flashes, causing the rod of the deep hunter to tremble in your pack, as if the two share some arcane affinity for each other. Try to siphon enough of dragon's essence to empower the guild, then break the imprisoning ward. Use the rod to the deep hunter to disable the enchantments or strengthen the spell of the imprisonment. I'm gonna try and leave it before now because I wanna talk to this guy some more. I make no promises to go oh. with your animancy games. I can't talk to him anymore. Interesting. Something I can do. Okay. I'm gonna do this in case what something goes wrong. What can I do you for? I'm here. Be yours to command, Captain. Well. What say? Hmm. Yeah? Like this. How may I help? Yes. Quick save. Leave it to me. Okay, I guess I'm gonna go for the metaphysics check because I think this is like a win-win situation. The guild gets empowered and he also gets free. Okay, so try to cipher enough of the dragon's essence to empower the guild, then break the imprisoning ward. The enchantment slips through your fingers in spite of its advanced age and depleted state. Clearly, someone built this prison to resist any potential meddling. Oh, god damn it. You survey the runes and consider your other options. Wait. Is it big? Wait. What if I do this with a lot? Nope. Okay, so maybe I need some kind of... How much do I even have? Metaphysics... Ugh, I only have one. Hmm... Okay. Does it make a difference if I go for some other one? No. What do I do here? I I mean if he's not lying, if he is not lying, he deserves to be free. This means the Juana will lose all of their power, I guess. Kind of sucks, but he doesn't deserve to be imprisoned. Let's use the Rod of the Deep Hunter to disable the enchantments. The runes crackle as their power dissipates. It seconds their light, huh? In seconds their light is extinguished, and the shapes of each arcane sigil lose definition until they fade into total obscurity. I can feel the weight of this pit diminishing around me. Do not stop now. Uh, patience, I'm getting to it. The next ward. Make haste. Okay, so I need to break this one at a time. Mm, I'm kind of getting scared about this. I'm gonna send Aloth. This still doesn't work, right? Yeah. So, disable. I'm not sure I feel confident about this. I am not sure at all. Sk 
Skiori, Skiori Alafas blinks down at you and rolls his shoulder if, as if for the first time. The burden of this prison is lifted. I will return to the beloved Atra. Skiori Alafas flexes his claws and lets out an exultant bellow. Will you consider showing mercy against those who wronged you? Mercy? Only for those who showed mercy to me. Mm. The rest? He splits his jaws into a lethal grin. Should your hopes darken on the high seas, you will feel a welcome chill as my shadow passes over your deck. Depend on it. Uh, I don't know if this is good or bad. Should your hopes darken on the high seas, you will feel a welcome chill. Chill is bad, right? As my shadow passes over your deck, depend on it. Roaring with triumph, Skiori Alafas aims his body at the rocky ceiling and takes off. Okay. Skiori Alafas beats his wings, lifting his massive form above the ground of his watery prison. He stretches open his jaws and roars, the ensuing blast blowing out the top of his prison, exposing it to the sky above. For the first time in untold years, natural light floods the interior of the chamber. He snaps his wings a second time, flying through the exit with wild abandon, tilting at reckless, unpracticed ang angles as he builds incredible speed. When he emerges, shrieks of horror and dismay grow in volume. Um, Is he killing people or, or are people just scared? I think he just left. Moments later, as he passes out of view, you hear an explosion of splintered wood, upheaved water, and incredible devastation on the southwestern corner of the island. Oh god, what have I done? <laughs> I mean... Gladly. It seems fair, the guy came here to help them out, they imprisoned him, and he was left to die? Yeah, I don't think that's fair. Takehu inclines his head and touches his forehead spot. What's in your mind? When I joined the guild, I was a fish in a dream. Takehu looks at the ground between his teeth. Uh, <laughs> between his feet. Water shapers were the keepers of our oldest covenant, protectors of history, heroes, I say. Now I see the guild only for what it has become. Ikera, a perversion of the oldest Juana art. He grimaces and looks away. So, let me just think. I might be dumb. I probably am. But it's not making a lot of sense to me. So, I understand the fact that they imprisoned the dragon. The dragon was being siphoned for power for the water shapers. But now Takehu is saying that the guild became a perversion of the oldest Wana art. Why? Don't they just do what they always did or, or or is it because they're not using their powers properly? I'm not understanding this. The guild might need a new way forward if it hopes to endure. If the guild cannot depend on its own teachings, then difficult times lie ahead of us all. I do not want to tarry in this house of regret a moment longer. My thoughts will be clearer in time. You are kind to listen, I say. Let's be off. Tell me. Uh, Gladly. Okay. Not sure if I ruined everything. Part of me wanted a dragon fight, but at the same time, not sure I can handle it right now. <laughs> I don't know. Onikaza will want your report, I say. Okay. Pariki should have known we could not keep a dragon forever. How do you even know about this, man? Nobody told you. Unless he saw the dragon go away? I don't know. He seems very relaxed for someone seeing a dragon for the first time coming out of his temple. I am very curious about what's happening. Darn! I don't know what happened. I'm usually faster than that, I swear. No one's that bad at Orland Slap. And I've played against some real sorry folk. 
Maybe I'm just the sorriest of the lot. Something tells me that ain't it. Okay. Well, everybody's peaceful. So we're gonna go to the queen on the rooftop. I'm guessing she's gonna be upset. Or maybe she wasn't even aware of this and... And she will understand why I did this. Fingers crossed. What madness has its clutches around Periki's overlook? The mountain shakes. Bellows of anguish echo over the wind. Onikaza raises a trembling hand to her brow. And a shadow, a shadow rose from the streets to cover Queen's birth on its way to the sea. Now the traders look to me for answers I do not have. Onikaza pounds her armrest with her fist. Nothing but panic and contradiction make their way to my ears. Tell me what happened. A uh, very sizable infestation in the basement. Naga invaded the guild to rescue an ancient sea dragon. You do not jest. I do not jest, woman. The queen blinks and slowly rises to sit straight in her throne. About many things, Highness. Not this, I say. Takehu folds his arms and closes his eyes. Something about the gesture causes Onikaza to hold her attention on him. For what did the guild endanger my city with this creature? I will hear Myru's report. Okay, so she's not particularly fond of them anyway. Onikaza searches over your shoulder. Uh... Skiori Alafas agreed to lend the water shippers his strength to protect the archipelago. Kahanga legends tell us that our ancestors made compacts with the creatures of the dead fire. Onikaza cuts herself off and snaps her fingers to an attendant. Send for Ranga Hauhua of the Wapua tribe. If she could soften the hearts of my cats, I say dragons are not beyond her. As her attendant makes for the exit, Onikaza leans back in her throne and considers. The Kara, but I cannot believe. Highness, would you trap another of Ngati's ancient pets? I would go any distance to protect my people. Can Nagati's chosen say the same? Mm, I don't like this. Onikaza turns back to you, leaving Takehu to pull on his hair and frown. Speak on, Watcher. As surely as a tide swelling over the shore, I feel you are not finished. Okay. So we have a metaphysics check. The forms of water shaping are fabrications made to tap into the dragon's prison. Go for that. Then Periki's students had an advantage in their lessons, I say. And Myru's after her. All at the cost of this beast's freedom. Yes. <clears throat> Onikaza raises her brow. If water shaping is not as our ancestors taught it, we cannot reckon how much of the original form we have lost. Mm hmm. A sinking feeling accompanies her thoughts as if Onikaza feels a vast well of uncertainty opening beneath her. What became of the dragon, Watcher? If the power of this beast strengthened our guild... Onikaz leans forward. We can lie and say nothing. I left, as I, I left him as I found him. That's kind of hard to believe since people saw him fly away. <laughs> I set him free. Nothing in Onikaz's outward bearing changes, but the silence of the rooftop garden feels especially oppressive. Then, you notice the scratching sound of her nails in the armors of her chair, and her tigers glance up at you with sudden attentiveness. No, no, I say. Nagati close her teeth around your boat and Wodika scrawl your name in her log of disgrace. Bitch, I will smack you. What's the problem when the guild is wrong? I said it's right. Scoring off because it's foreigners. I said I'm the favor to you. What do we have? History. It is a poor ruler who doesn't recognize what is under her feet, Tonikaza. Go for that. How dare you? Suck it. She sits back in her throne to the gasps of her attendants, all of whom give up, to, give up any pretense of ignoring your exchange. If my apprentices struggle to learn Nagati's art, then we have no hope of replenishing the ranks. And I do not have the luxury of patience. I cannot keep Rawatai in check if they do not recognize our strength. 
The guild can outlast this, but our enemies will test us beyond what we can endure. Lady, I don't work for you. I'm not affiliated to you. I'm not your friend. This is the thanks I this is the my thanks for the help I gave your brother. I didn't set out to damage the Juana cause, Highness. Where do we go from here? I guess it's time to see your <laughs> I guess it's time to see if your rivals have any work available. I'm gonna play an evil playthrough for sure. I didn't set out to damage the Juana cause, Highness. Then you are nothing but a fish puppet and Gatti sent to trick us with cheap lures of hope. Even in desperate times, this falls beneath the expectations of the Kahanga crown. You may see yourself out. Sure. A wave of concerned whispers crosses from one end of the rooftop to the other. I kind of want to be cheeky. Would you simply hand an ally to your competitors, Onekaza? She winces. An expectant murmur grows among the onlookers of the rooftop garden. Wait. Aha! Water shapers have kept this city in the hands of the Kohanga. A queen cannot do this alone. Eh, yeah, now you cry for help. She looks up at you, a deep furrow cleaving her brow. You may work off your debt to the crown. Uh huh. I will swallow my pride if it keeps an ally under my roof. The tension in the garden begins to ebb with the softening of Onikaza's tone. Just kidding, I quit. <laughs> ah, this is too good. This is too good. Oh man. I I I, I want to see what this does. I'm going to load the game after, sorry. I'm going to repeat the dialogue, but I want to see what this does. Just kidding, I quit. A gasp rises from the attendance of the rooftop garden. Onekaza's expression remains stoic and unflinching. I expel you from all service to the Kahanga. When Tangaloa widens his jaws to accept you, no one in Serpent's Crown will mark the day, even in sand. Onekaza turns her head from you and points toward the stairs down. Her courtiers all turn their gaze from you at once, the rooftop garden falls silent. Oh man, this was lovely. <laughs> okay, so wait. We lost major reputation and apparently we were losing quests because we did this. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but that was, that was too good to pass up. Bitch, you were evil to me. I'm gonna smack you. <laughs> well, she takes a lot of damage. Okay, let's, let's just quick load this. Man, that was that was just too good to pass up. It was too good. Sorry, got. Ah, what? Wait. Okay, I have an auto save. Sorry. I thought I had quick save before. Man, that was too good. Just kidding. I quit. Oh my god. What madness has been Okay, sorry, I'm gonna pass this quickly. Panic and contradiction make their way to my ears. Tell uh, me, you yeah. didn't know about me. For what did the guild endanger Mkahatsen? Yes. I will speak on, Watcher. As surely as a tide yes. swelling yes. open. If what, what became of the Set him free. No, no, I say. Nagati close her teeth around your boat and Wodika scrawl your I'm actually kind of curious. Of Instead of going this way, which is kind of offensive. What if I go for this? What the guild did was wrong, I said it right. If my apprentices struggle to learn Nagati's art... Okay, this is the same thing. No, I cannot keep Rawatai in check uh -huh. if they do not recognize our strength. The guild can outlast this, but our enemies will test okay, us Okay, well, uh, what we can this was why my last choice. I'm gonna go for where do we go from here. Even in desperate times, this falls beneath the expectations yeah, yeah, of the Yeah, yeah, she Kahanga keeps on bitching. Crown. You may see yourself... Wait, Watership, you may work off your debt to the crown. I will swallow my pride okay. if it keeps an ally. I'm just gonna say life. nothing. I'm not gonna go for the thank you for the second chance. She's being a bitch, so screw her. Akira, 
Perhaps you are wise to hold your tongue. My water-shaping masters will arrive soon, and I say the guild will be stronger for their guidance. Okay. But the queen's work is not finished until she has endured all of Nagati's trials. I could send birds to every Ranga and rally them to our cause, but Nikitaka needs more than strength. We need pure Juana fury. We need the Wahaki. The Wahaki. My brother calls the Wahaki the last true Juana. He's severe on the Kahanga, but I do not call him wrong. Onika has a thumbs or chin and nods. The tribe hates all foreigners. Passing ships are attacked on sight, and explorers never make it back to the beach. <laughs> the Living Lands. I'm I'm guessing people from the Living Lands is similar. I like them already. I have hesitated to let the trading company see my teeth, but those days are behind us. Filling the seas with Wahaki war canoes will strike terror in the heart of even Rawatai's iron fleet. Onikaza smirks at the idea. Okay. Well, I'll make contact with the Wahaki and hope for the best. Sail for the Isle of Oriokoiki and return when you have an answer from the tribe, whether fair or foul. The island lies northwest of Nekataka. There is a phrase which will protect my royal herald. Over crumbling mountains, across blighted seas. If you remember this, it could save your life. Oof, counting on my memory to save my life? We're gonna die. Over crumbling mountains, across blighted seas. Onekaza dismisses with a nod. Okay, over crumbling mountains, I'll remember that. Write it down if you must, but recall it when the time comes. Okay, the I'm gonna take this as a sign. I am gonna take this as a sign. I am gonna write it down. That, that's why I have my little notebook here. Sorry. Over. Crumbling. Mountains across blighted seas. Okay. Hopefully, <clears throat> I remember picking up the, the notebook when the time comes. Okay, so in dialogue. Oh, Onikaza nods and dismisses you with a wave. Ah, okay. Yeah, so th this way. Quests don't fail and stuff like that. So that's good. So, um... Let me see here. Where am I even going now? Classic. We have this one still. He waits in fire. I don't guess this is still too... Oh! Recommended companion. One of those, one of those guys that isn't actually a companion. Fruitful Alliance, this is the main quest. The Lost Sanctuary, also for Takehu. And kill somebody. Bounty. Oh, return to Udita. Dunwich. Symbols of Death, yes, yes, yes. Terms of Trade, Poco Kohara. Skipping Ahead. Dim Prospects, Poco Kohara again. Bounty. Okay. Ancient Temple near the Karatapu Channel. More Poko Kohara. The Painted Masks, we have to wait for this. Hanging Sepulchers, The Lighted Path. Alright, oh, have I not gone there yet? Did I just completely forget about this? Oh my god, man. Yeah, this is... Oh my, I forgot about it. I cannot believe I forgot about this. I was so... Um... Excited, anxious, whatever you want to call it, to go and do this quest because it, it relates. To, oh, not here. It relates to it there and his lady friend and her son because he's apparently been brainwashed into being part of a cult called um, the, the something something of the first light, the, the pilgrims, the, the partisans, the partisans of the light path. And I want to have some words with the leader of that cult, and it there does too. So we're gonna have to go. Um, we also have to go there. 
to do that bounty. But I want to go to the sacred stair into the Temple of Gone. I want to see what that's about. And I'm kind of curious about the dragon still. Is something going to happen in the future now that I save them or something? Oh yeah, this is Ogne. Yeah, Burden referred this to a woman named Ogne in the Temple of Gone on Eketaka who recruits new members like the Toth. This woman's unceasing smile and direct violating gaze give the strong impression of someone selling something. Light of Aethys be upon you. Burden said you could tell us about the partisans of the Lighted Path. Your friend guided you truly. Gadarian Bosch has honored me with the duty of helping his message reach all of the faithful. We answer the Shining God's call. He shows us the way and we march in his wake. Already the Vanguard prepares to make its journey, with more soon to follow. Okay. Who are the Vanguard? Gadarian Bosch leads the Vanguard. They are the most righteous of the Partisans. They will be the first to join the ranks of Aethys. The first to charge at his call. It there leans in toward you. Baron said something about the Vanguard. You don't think he's that dumb, do you? Uh, he kind of looked like it. Ogden's eyes shift momentarily to a dare, then back to you. She says nothing, merely re-raising her smile. Do you have a list of people in the Vanguard? We want to see if our friends is among them. The Vanguard know their own, and Gadarian Bosch knows them. Beyond that, we keep such information private. It there turns his head away to hide a look of exasperation, but then it shifts. His eyes suddenly hopeful. He looks back at Ogden. If they know their own, what do you think they'd say to a couple new members? Can we be in the Vanguard too? Cool. I'm afraid you cannot. The Vanguard is reserved for the most faithful among us. You have not even joined the Partisans. Okay, but apparently we have some options. We can go for religion, diplomacy, or even bluff. Aethas does not play favorites as Wodika does. He would welcome all who wish to join him. I think religion makes sense here. I agree. And Gadarian Bosch has admitted to the Vanguard all who asked to join. <laughs> okay, this was very... Bipolar. No, you cannot join. You are not even part of us. I agree you can join. <laughs> Unfortunately, even if I were to initiate you right now into our order, it would be too late to join the Vanguard. Their ship is docked right now in Nekataka and set to depart at any moment. Oh, it there looks at you with wide eyes. You think he could be on it? If he left right after we did, we gotta go. They won't take you, but there will be more ships to follow. Stay and hmm. learn about the partisans of the lighted path, and I'll see that there is room for you. Uh, that's a real nice offer. We'll uh, think about it and get back to you. <sighs> How will you join up with Aethus? Chase him on a boat? Yes, in fact. We will follow him along the lighted path. When the time is right, he will welcome our souls into his legion. Guderian Bosch has seen it. Uh, just your souls, then? Not a... Not your bodies? Your journey sounds dangerous. The Shining God demands total commitment from his followers. As usual. What good is a soldier who is not willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for her cause? To walk the lighted path, one must be willing to never turn back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tough to walk very far without a soul. The Holoborn, huh? Usually you'd have to stack him in a wheelbarrow and push him around. <laughs> Is it wrong of me to laugh about that? <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, so farewell. Ogden nods, an expression no different than it was when you arrived. Oh, and Takehu wants to speak to me. Shaking his head, Takehu seems uncertain of where to place his focus. He draws and expels heavy, whistling breaths through his nose. Do you want to talk? And to my tribe. The water shapers were keepers of the past. Our connection to the ancestors. His speech rises in intensity, though he doesn't seem aware of it. How the guild heaped praise on Ngati's chosen. How they congratulated themselves for acquiring me, I say. My cage was a gilded one. Their dragon. He was not so lucky. Uh, yeah, he 
you don't think you're blowing this just a little bit out of proportion? He folds his arms and glowers at you. The guild teaches a likeness of Ingati's art. For shame. But they posture before outsiders like masters of old. He holds up an authoritative finger, breathing heavily. To inspire the world with Ingati's gift. This is my calling. Hmm. I guess I'll go for this one. Water shaping keeps the peace no matter how it changed over the years. None of this changes how I feel when I practice the forms. Like swimming over an ocean trench, I say. He crosses his arms over his chest and sighs. But Pariki twisted my art into a perversion. An echo of what it should be. The guild must change for the Hawana to grow. I say that as Ngadi's message delivered through her son's mouth. I will say, one thing that I'm thinking about is playing this game without having Takehu in the party. I think people are gonna miss a lot. <clears throat> what do you plan on doing about it? I will bring a change not seen since the days of our ancestors. Takehu thumbs his chin, considering. Our legends speak of the covenant with Ngati, one that defined the tribes for generations. The ancestors gave her unwavering devotion. And she gave them a gift. The Kehu sighs and lazily scoops a palm full of water droplets from the air. They form a rough approximation of an anglerfish. Losing Ukaizo severed our connection to the gods. Over time, their gifts diminished. The anglerfish turns belly up and puffs into vapor. The tribes have never needed Ukaizo more. With Ngadi's blessing, I would bring Ukaizo to them. Okay, so tell me what you know of Ukaizo. An island. A city, a dream, the best of our people, before Cataclysm buried it under ash and waves. Others call it the heart of the Hawana Empire, and more still, call it home. And what do you expect to find on Ukaizo? The bleached bones of the past? Lewd sculptures? Really did? No one knows what the Hawana left behind, and there is little enough for us to guess by. So Ngati gave you water shaping? The Kara. Talent like mine was once effortless, I say. Our birthright as Awana. He smooths back his hair, his hands coming away damp. Our ancestors could raise islands or divide the seas. No warship could stand against us. Now only a fraction of us remember. He wipes his palm dry, frowning all the time. So you are committed to finding the island? I say it is obvious now that Ngati brought me into the world to do this for the Hawana. He frowns, uncertain about his comfort with the idea. Whatever we find, what better crew than friends to find lost Ukaizo on treacherous seas? Akira? He makes a sweeping gesture, grinning all the while. I'm glad we got him excited. Makes me wish I knew how to sail. <laughs> or we could visit the bathhouse for a nice quiet soak. Uh, just a thought. He shrugs. Did you hear that? We're friends, him and I. She flushes prettily, a happy smile tugging at her lips. Captain, you have let the handsome fish do all the talking. I needed this. Thank you. He releases a heavy sigh, shaking out his arm, arms as the tension dissipates. <laughs> it's no problem, Takehu. Ikara, let us be off. The world around you darkens and once again you feel an insistent tug for your attention. The pull centering from Takehu's soul. So once again we have Andra talking to us. My handsome fish is intimidated by his own potential. How upsetting for him. The air around you feels thick with moisture. Ondra leans forward in a throne. See the anxiety that takes shelter behind his confident smile? He has worn that since he was old enough to swim. Okay. I could always plant the covenant in his dreams. But that would spoil the fun of Ukaizo. My final test for the Juana. Help him to rise up from crawling. Help him to stand and walk as a man. As a god. Mm. Her presence draws away and watery fingers lightly brush the nape of your neck. Still with us, Captain? I had no desire to bore you with my inane chatter. Takehu smirks, eyeing you with concern. Well, let's be off. How close are we to level up? Uh, still quite far. <laughs> yeah, of course. 
Um, okay, so let, let, let me just look at this. So delighted... Okay. Get to the Vanguard ship. It became clear in speaking with Ogden that the partisans of Lighted Path intend to join Aethas by dying in close proximity to him. Burden said that he intended to be on their Vanguard, the first wave to join Aethas. Their ship is docked in Nekataka. We have to get there before it departs. Okay. We still have a few minutes. I guess I can go and look. <coughs> Hopefully it's not a very long sequence. So we want to go to Queen's Birth and we want to go uh, just Queen's Birth, I guess. Do not ambush me in the gullet. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that their boat is close to mine. At the docks. Okay. I think we're at the, at the far end. Uh, there is no boat here, only mine. Right? Maybe we can find someone at the docks that can tell us something? <sighs> we missed it. They're gonna park that thing next to Aethys and slit their own throats. I wish they'd gone ahead with it before they got Baron involved. If we can't catch it, can you promise me we'll go right now? Uh, I didn't actually plan on doing that, but for you with there, yes, we will go right now. I knew there was something I liked about you. Come on, man. Okay. So we're gonna go for our ship. However... Uh, I think this is where I'm gonna actually end the episode because we're gonna see uh, what happens on the ship afterwards. And by the way, ah yeah, so we still lost a lot of reputation with Juana uh, by, I guess, letting the dragon go free. Let me just see how this looks. The Juana. Yeah, I think this is our positive slider and this is the negative slider. It's not that bad, honestly. We are on good terms with pretty much everybody. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna end the episode here and the next one I'm, we're gonna start by going after this ship because we wanna help our friend Eder here. The quest is still on our level, right? Yeah, it's still on our level, so I think it should be okay to do. And we're gonna find out what's happening. So, as usual, my friends, I wanna thank you all for being here with me in the channel. Watching some PoE2 Dead Fire. I hope you guys are enjoying this amazing story thus far. If you guys have any questions, suggestions, anything at all, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. There's videos coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.